Hey Coder, welcome to Code Combat, where we're going to be testing the speed of various programming languages. The first thing to say is I really have no idea what I'm doing. This here is my own programming journey. I started with VBA when I was working in finance, then I was learning web development, so I learned PHP and JavaScript, HTML, all of that kind of stuff. Then when I wanted to know much more about data analytics and working with machine learning and deep learning and AI models, I worked a lot with Python. After working a lot with Python, I started working a lot more with TypeScript and also other blockchain technologies as well. So I was working with Solidity, etc. too. And then finally, I wanted something which is more performant and that I would enjoy working with more because there was more to it, something a bit more interesting. And so I chose Rust and I wrote Solana programs in Rust. I've written an auto GPT in Rust. I've written other financial applications in Rust. And so, you know, that's where I have some experience. And now I'm learning C because I want to get a bit more closer to the machine. So I am a self-taught developer. And therefore, you're probably going to learn some bad practices from me, but that's fine. As long as we move fast, break things and build things, I'm okay with that. The speed tests that we're going to be running today are on these programming languages and not in this particular order either. Now, I chose these just because I was interested to know how they performed. There was really no rhyme or reason, and it's not really a fair contest. So, for example, where you have some languages like C or Rust or Go, which are compiled ahead of time, versus something like JavaScript, which is compiled just in time. It's not really a fair comparison. But that said, I wanted to do the comparison anyway, so that for those of you who were wondering how much faster or slower is C versus Rust or Go versus Python, and if Python slower, how much slower is it, etc. These were questions I had. And so this is why I went and wrote this test. The test that we'll be running is known as the sieve of Eratosthenes. And to cut a long story short, I went to ChatGPT and said, come up with a good test for me to test the speed of different languages. And this is where it could already go horribly wrong. So just take all of this with a pinch of salt. But just note at the end here what ChatGPT says. It says this algorithm is one of the most efficient ways to find all primes smaller than a given number, n, when n is smaller than 10 million or so. So n will be our limit. We're going to set a limit and we're going to try to find as many primes as we can by the time that limit is reached. I am by no means an expert either. I asked ChatGPT for help on every language, including the ones I was extremely comfortable with, to help me optimize that language as much as it could in terms of memory and speed. The other thing I did was run the tests on an AWS EC2 virtual machine, something that anyone can spin up and run really easily. And I ran it on Ubuntu, which is basically Linux, on version 22.04 on the x86 architecture. So I used a T2 media machine. Now the test consisted really of two rounds. Round one, the limit was set to 1 million. So we needed to find as many prime numbers as possible until we reached 1 million. Nothing would be printed out. The code would just run and then it would stop. Once we had run a limit of 1 million, I wanted to do a limit of 500 million, really just to see what happens in terms of performance for these other programming languages? And I did have to ask ChatGPT here to optimize a lot. For example, with JavaScript, the garbage collector would just flat out say, uh uh, not going there. So I really had to go back and forth and try to optimize the code a lot. And I managed to get all programs to run here and to run fully to the limit of 500 million in terms of finding prime numbers. So this is what C looked like in terms of the code, it had about 38 lines and C++ about 34. Now with Python, we were able to code the whole thing within 23 lines, which in terms of the ease of writing this program, Python by far is the most simple to understand and the fastest to write. So if this was a competition about speed in terms of writing the application, Python would of course win hands down. Now Go took up about 30 lines of code and Rust took up only 28. Of course, it's gonna be more familiar to me because I'm used to programming with Rust, but I really actually like the syntax and also how neat it was. Now, there really weren't many types to deal with. So both JavaScript and TypeScript are virtually the same code. Now, if you take a look at any of these programming languages, for example, here I have C up, where on line 29, we start the clock, we run the function and we end the clock. We're not taking into account anything else in terms of tracking the time, how fast it was. We're just tracking 
from the point before it runs the function to the point it finishes the function, how fast is the programming language? Here you'll see I have my speed test folder, which I've downloaded from GitHub here on the virtual machine running Ubuntu. And I'm just SSH'd remotely into it. And here I've got my Rust test over here, which I'm now also going to CD into. So CD into Rust test. And what I'm going to do is just build this. So cargo build when you're using Rust dash dash release like follows. And then what I need to do here is just run it by going dot forward slash target forward slash release forward slash Rust underscore test like such. Now I've just rebuilt this for the test size of 100 million just so that it's a different number to all of the other tests because I want to just show you this running. But essentially what you can do here is you can open up a separate terminal and hit top. So to actually track how much memory was being used when some of these applications took say more than a second to run, I was able to actually see what percentage of memory was this program actually using. And so that's how I tracked memory. Judge me however you want. That's how I did it. I didn't know how else to do it. Let's actually do it for 1 billion as a limit. So now I'm going to go and run that. And let's see here. I can see the memory allocation on Rust test is about 3.1%. You can see this here ran in 9.96 seconds. Let's go and see how we did in the first round. Round one with a limit of 1 million. Here are the results. So the top row here shows all the results in terms of the time taken within seconds. And you can see here Rust actually was the winner. Now, interestingly enough, C was slower than Rust by quite some. I'm just going to put an asterisk on this because with C, there are some tricks that I had up my sleeve, but I'll come to that later. Now, if I take a look at the Rust column, I can see, for example, against, I don't know, JavaScript here, it's showing 206%. So this is looking at the percentage change from JavaScript to Rust. Now on the left-hand side of the blue line, for example, down here on TypeScript, you see minus 63%. That's showing from TypeScript to Rust. So on the left-hand side of the blue line, it's actually showing from the other programming language to the one you're looking at on the column versus on the right-hand side of the blue line, it's looking at the column you're looking at versus the other programming language. And that's just to help you see this either way. So basically, if the number's in green, it means that another programming language was faster than the one that you're looking at. So for example, on Rust, we can see here, nothing was faster. Everything there is white. Now, if we look at Go, which actually did really well here, we can see the only other language that was faster than Go was Rust here, and it's got a percentage of 94%. And then in third place was C, which was beaten, as you can see, by Go and Rust. Now, unfortunately, the one that completely lost in terms of speed, but like I said, it was never a fair test anyway, was Python. But what's interesting is just to see by how much. And again, these percentages are looking at the change from one speed to another, like a percentage increase or decrease. That's how they're being calculated. Also, the link to this Google Sheets where these results are is also in the GitHub repo. So please feel free to go and click on that link to go and see how these percentages are being calculated. Now, these times are so quick that I couldn't really do a memory test. So what did we do? Well, we went to round two with a test limit of 500 million. And the results we got are as follows. Now, Rust came in at number one again, using about 1.6% of memory. Go again, used about the same memory and came in at number two. Now, in terms of the percentage speed versus Rust, Go actually performed better here. If I go back in time, we can see here, Go versus Rust here was 94%, whereas here it's 34%. And of course, in third place is C, which also only used about 1.6% in memory. Now keep that in mind because we're going to come back to this in a moment. Now, even though I do love Python, I've worked with it a lot. I have to say it got a real beating over here. And bear in mind, when you look at the Python code, I was using the NumPy library as well, which is supposed to make things fast. In fact, I can tell you it did make things faster when I did this without the NumPy library. It was, I think, about 64 seconds. Now, another surprising result is C++. So C++ was also abysmally slow, but in terms of memory efficiency, it was the most memory efficient out of all the languages. Now, I don't know C++, so I'm banking on the fact that I probably did something wildly wrong here. In fact, there's probably 
so many mistakes in this test anyway. So again, take it with a pinch of salt. But I have to say, I was really surprised at C++ and I spent a lot of time with ChatGPT challenging it, trying to give it different code snippets, etc., to be like, hey, optimize this. The C++ result in terms of speed doesn't make sense. And I've been assured by ChatGPT, but I'm sure there's humans watching this who are much smarter that it was the correct code. Now, in terms of memory usage, the worst was JavaScript, Python, and TypeScript. And I was actually interested to see that the TypeScript program used more memory than the JavaScript. And I think that's going to be maybe something to do with how the V8 engine works. I have no idea. But these programming languages used wildly more memory than say the statically typed languages that are compiled ahead of time. And so at first glance, we have to acknowledge that our winner is actually Rust. But if I was to say what was really impressive, given a language's ability to be easy to learn, super fast, having a huge community, having lots of jobs available, etc., and giving like ridiculously good performance, I was really impressed with Go. So if you were to ask somebody, you know, what's it like to learn Go versus learning Rust? I haven't learned Go, so I can't say this. But I've seen a lot of people saying that Go is super easy to learn. There's a fantastic community. Now, this gentleman actually posted a video talking about Go this morning. And I have to say, if you're interested in Go or you want to know more about, you know, Go versus Rust, etc., or what are the advantages of Go, this was a fantastic video. I definitely recommend watching it. So by now we're thinking, cool, Rust won, but on balance, maybe Go is the best language to learn. And we can't make that conclusion. This is just one type of test, probably poorly implemented. I have no idea, but this is just one type of test, right? There's many different programs you can write in languages. And in my opinion, the right thing to do is just to pick the right language. I love programming. I love coding. I love all these languages. In fact, right now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm learning C, which actually brings me onto the point. When you look at C, a lot of it is about how you go and allocate memory. With C, you're much closer to the machine than you are with some of the other programming languages. In fact, I would say probably more than any of the other programming languages that I've looked at other than assembly, which of course I've not factored in here. And this was the original code given to me by ChatGPT for C. And when I ran it on my local machine, I noticed it took up a ridiculous amount of memory. In fact, I think it took up pretty much all the memory I had available on my machines. It took up a huge amount of memory, but it ran super fast. Here's the result. It was able to do 500 million within 1.42 seconds, which absolutely smoked everything else. If you are prepared to go and sacrifice your memory over here and have something which is not performing at all on memory, you could technically go and make this trade off like I did and go and get something ridiculously more performant. Now, for those of you who have a lot of experience building very low level applications or a lot of experience in C, C++, etc., I would really appreciate your take on where I might have gone wrong with some of these tests, not just for me, but for anyone watching this video. But for now, based on the way I see it, with everything I've put together, with all the tests and controls put in place, I would have to say we have a winner. Just to summarize what was valuable in doing this test for me was to see that if, like me, you're coming from programming languages originally, like Python, for example, which is dynamically typed, or JavaScript, which again is compiled just in time. So it's not compiled ahead of time. And you do go and put in a little bit of extra effort to understand what the machine's doing with memory allocation and types, etc. You do get programs that perform a lot faster. And the reason why this is important to me is I'm about to embark on writing some super highly efficient financial applications. To but what that means is I need to make sure I'm optimizing my code and getting my code right. So I love programming. I love coding. And honestly, learning lower level languages has made me love it even more. Till the next one. Take care and talk soon.